Hello, and you are watching Quint Essentials! Thank you, everybody, for who, if you watched that, uh, power your GPU with this video that I put up there. It's actually, uh, been getting a lot of attention, and it's my most watched video, my most liked video. I know it's not a lot, but it's a lot to me, especially when my next biggest video only has, like, 700 views. So anyway, thank you for that. Appreciate it. And I love how some people are like, wow, you deserve more subs. Like, this is pretty good. Thank you. Faulty Script, for example. Thank you for telling me that, dang, you deserve more subs. I've been getting a lot of questions. Like, people think I actually know my stuff on this. And I was just kind of putting the video up and being like, I don't know if this works. Let's just jam it in there and find out. And that's basically what the video was. <laughs> but... And it did, uh, at least for my application. Um, and people are asking, like, will it work with this? Will it work with that? And I try to give them as best of an answer as I can. But I'll admit, uh, and I try to admit this in the comments too, it's, I only know so much, try at your own risk. For example, Zatelity comments, so with a 550 watt PSU, could it be enough to charge an ASUS RX 570? I assume power, not charge, but uh, I actually did a little research. I, I did a benchmark and I included the link with the reply that I did to that benchmark and it says, according to this, your GPU draws a maximum of 195 watts. Now some PSUs will say how many watts they supply power to each rail on their label and basically said if your PSU says it supplies 195 watts or more to the 12 volt rail you should be okay and then I also said I'm no expert try at your own risk and good luck <laughs> I don't have a lot to back that on really honestly and that's what this video is about let's let's delve a little deeper into a power supply see how it supplies power if we're really concerned about power consumption and whether you're not supposed to draw enough power to power a graphics card through a hard drive wire. Is it safe to do it, basically? That's the real question we're trying to ask. So we'll try to answer that by figuring out a little more how it actually works to power everything. And we'll go from there. <coughs> Nadim Ahmed. This is the one that kind of inspired me to do this video. And I was a little irritated at first with this comment, but he says, that is for hard drive and has limited power. You can't get 70 watts from this. You can get max 20 watts. Well, Nadim, I think, sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, but I think you're both wrong and right. Um, I think it depends on the situation and it depends what you connect to the same rail as uh, this graphics card. In the previous video, we've established that there are different colors of wires on the SATA power port, and each color represents a different voltage rail. So there's orange for 3.3, red for five, and yellow for 12. And we've also realized through the multimeter that it utilizes the 12 volt rail. So other people have asked, is it okay to have hard drives connected to the same cord? Cause you know, you got not just one SATA power cable to it, but two, see, they kind of just, they kind of just daisy chain off each other. You could have a hard drive on this one and then the graphics card adapter on this one. And yeah, this would be pulling power from the same, it goes back to the same source. So if you've got a hard drive here, it could be drawing power away from the graphics card and you won't have as much wattage for the graphics card. Uh, that's true and also not true. Again, it depends on what type of hard drive you have connected. So. It is true in the case of these giant three and a half inch form factor hard drives. They draw power from the 12 volt rel, um, the same rel that the graphics card is coming off of. If you had one of these plugged in here as well as the graphics card adapter, then yes, this would be drawing some power from the graphics card. The two and a half inch form factor drives, hold them side by side for comparison. These ones don't actually use 12 volts, they use five volts. And this is why you're able to power them off of a USB cable when they're in an enclosure like a portable hard drive. External portable three and a half inch form factor hard drives like this my book, man this thing is old, requires not just a data connection but a power connection as well. So you got a wall adapter that plugs into this thing and then a cable that goes to the computer. And they're not nearly as portable because of that, which is kind of aggravating. That's because, well, the big ones use 12 volts, the little ones use five volts. So with that being said, I feel fairly comfortable saying that you could plug this one into the same daisy chained cable as your graphics card adapter, but it'll be drawing power from the red cable, okay? Not the yellow one, where the graphics card adapter will be drawing power from the yellow one. So it's, it's, it's on the same 
cable, sure, but it's drawing power from a different wire than the graphics card adapter, so you should be okay. You can have as many of these on here as you want, and it would be fine as long as they're the small ones, because they will draw power from a different one. And I don't think all power supplies will have a sticker that labels exactly what power it supplies to what voltage rail. But this, I think, a lot would. And this one does, for example. Now, I don't know the difference between 12 volt V1 and 12 volt V2. If you happen to know that, feel free to comment. I'd love to... We're learning, we're learning this all together. <laughs> but you combine those two, you get 264 watts, which doesn't seem like it makes a lot of sense, because that's 23 amps together times 12. That'd be more than 264. <laughs> I guess I wouldn't go above 264 watts. But yeah, in, in the case of that RX 570, that pulled a max of 195 watts. It sounds like this could use it, as long as you didn't have a bunch of other stuff plugged into the same thing that could overdo it. And this is just with any power supply and with any graphics card setup, whether you're using the little graphics card cable adapter or not. Uh, you know, you need enough power wattage, basically, to power your graphics card. So if you have one that you know draws a lot more, that's why you also have to sometimes upgrade your PSU. I felt like that was a pretty good answer but then i also wondered like lots of psus don't have just one of these daisy chain cables they have another one now this one only has one of the sata power but this one has the old style uh molex kind that which this one actually has a little adapter on it a molex to a, a sata power adapter i'm like well okay well if you had some like a hard drive plugged into this one will draw power away from this one, then this one I'm not really sure. Uh, that is until you crack open the PSU, which is what we're gonna do. So we turn it like this. We see that there's a bunch of yellow wires. We have a bunch of them that just kind of group together and go into one solder point there. Now there's a couple back here. These are yellow with uh, black stripes on it. And they're the ones that go to this uh, connector here. This is the 4-pin one which uh, also plugs into your motherboard, usually by your CPU fan. Um, maybe it's for your CPU fan. I'm, I'm not really sure. Feel free to comment if you know what this is for, why it plugs into the motherboard near the CPU fan. It's hard to see from this angle, but you see there's more of them. There's another group like behind it right there. See here's a group closer to the foreground. And then behind it, there's another group of yellow cables. Are they connected to the same thing? I think to really see that, I'm gonna have to actually pull the circuit board out of the casing completely. Those, yep, okay, so. Those two pins. The yellow with black stripes there, and then the, all the yellows are these two pins. And it's just a big glob of solder right there. So that just tells me it doesn't matter where you draw power from. If it's from a yellow wire at all, it comes from this glob, like the same source. It means you're sharing the same voltage and amps with, and gen, in general, you're sharing the same overall wattage that's available with every other device that uses power from the yellow wire or 12 volt rail. And you can see this is the same case with the other rails too. So here, yeah, you got whole like all the black cables basically come in to four groups here and then they're all soldered in this giant glob there you got your five volt rail they come in into two different points and they're globbed together and of course there's your 3.3 not as much going on there they come in to just one big point there but yeah so every rail is tied together in its own thing. Like if it uses 12 volts, it draws from one of these yellow wires, it comes from the same place. If it uses five volts, it draws power from the red cable somewhere and comes from this point. If it uses 3.3 volts, it, it draws from an orange wire, pulls from this point. So whether your graphics card is drawing power through an hard drive to graphics card adapter or through an actual power cable designed for a graphics card itself, it doesn't matter. Both cables come from the same place. But if you're still worried about how much power it is, then look up specs as to how much hard drives draw. Look up specs to your particular graphics card. Each one's gonna be different, so I can't just say, oh, well, they draw 300 watts. It depends on the card. And it also depends on what they're doing. The more you stress it, the more power it's using. If it's just idling running the desktop picture, 
with no programs running, like it's not going to use as much. But find out what the max amount of watts it uses and then see, uh, look on your PSU itself. We're going to use Zatility's comment and his RX 570, which seems like from what research I've found, it uses 195. So because I got 264 watts there underneath the 12 volt rails, I should be good to run that. Assuming, you know, your your motherboard uses 12 volts as well. So, you, you know, I got some of it, we'll use that. And then like the system I use this in would probably be using one three and a half inch hard drive too. So, um, and then if it just seems close, which that does seem close, you know, you only got 69 watts of power to really go play around with um for to power everything else you might want to get a larger one just in case and that's the whole reason why we buy larger psus in general now if all these wires are to actually connect together i should be able to do something called a continuity test where you switch that over to continuity god damn it what the continuity setting does is that it sends a small electrical charge to the one probe and if it's allowed to make it back to the black probe it makes that pleasant noise. So this way you can tell if something's connected electrically. So I guess like the yellow prong, the yellow wires on the graphics card connector. Yes, they are, okay. The 24 pin connector to the motherboard's got a couple wires there that are yellow. Yep. Let's try our graphics card adapter. Okay, even that works. What about a Molex? Yep, and I bet this one too, because you can even see the yellow wire coming from the same pin. Yep. Okay, what about the yellow and black ones? Yep. So if I'm able to do that with any two yellow wires, touch any the probes on any two yellow wires here, and it beeps, that tells me that they're connected somewhere. Yes, it doesn't seem like it would matter if you used this adapter or if we use the actual cable directly from a power supply meant for a graphics card. Except, and here's one more thing I noticed, there is so many amps that one wire can actually handle before it can just melt. So that is one thing here. This thing definitely can't handle as many watts as this. This has three wires that come directly from the power supply. This takes basically one wire and splits it into three. So how much can this actually handle? Well, every wire should say what gauge it is. Like it's printed right on the wire. So if you look closely, like this one says 18 AWG, that's American wire gauge. And you can actually look up what that is. When you look online, it, it kind of depends on the place you look at. Like one place I'm finding, um, powerstream.com, they have a chart says that an 18 gauge wire can handle up to 16 amps. So 16 amps times 12 watts, it can handle up to 192 watts. So that RX 570, that's just under what that can handle, the max amount. But of course that's it running the max amount. Um, if it was running that all the time, that could be a problem, but I doubt it'd really be running full blast all the time. So you might still be safe there, but yes, you'd probably be safer using this. Over at stayaligned.com, their chart says that it can handle up to 10 amps if it's under 50 feet. And it looks like it depends on the number of cord conductors. Engineeringtoolbox.com, their chart says the same. It's 10. If it's a single core, it's 10. Let's just assume that it is. But we play it safe, 10 times 12 volts. It's 120 watts. This is a pretty cool idea. But yes, it is kind of a little too good to be true. You can get away with it with lower end graphics cards because the lower end ones will use less power and therefore they'll probably be okay. And really if they use less than 120 watts, then you're good. I guess it really depends on the, the gauge of wire that your power supply uses too. It probably is 18 gauge, but you'd want to look at that and whatever gauge it is, look that up. See how many amps that can really handle. And then times that amps by the 12 volts, because that's the voltage that that takes. And it'd give you how many watts that one wire can handle that this thing would use. Then look up the graphics card that you want to be using with this cable and see what the max amount of watts that that would be using. And if it's more than what you've calculated with the gauge of your wire, 
then you probably shouldn't use it. The safest bet obviously would be just to get, you know, if, it, if you're in my situation where you got an HP computer with a proprietary motherboard and a proprietary PSU, just buy a new computer. Like I might have to end up doing that. Um, I might look into buying a whole new motherboard and a whole new PSU when I really want to upgrade to something really nice. But in the meantime, I've been getting by with what I got. But I guess any time that this comes in handy and I can actually use it, awesome, great. And if I could use that in place of spending hundreds of dollars replacing new stuff, then great. So with that, I guess, thanks for watching. Hopefully that clears up a few more answers. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And yeah. <laughs> Alright. Bye-bye.